and that class is why the Zorglaxian digestive system requires a minimum of three stomachs and Professor Zilthrop's monotonous lecture was abruptly interrupted by a cacophony of squeaks, chirps and warbles from his students. The gelatinous blob of an alien teacher rippled with annoyance, his translucent skin flashing an irritated shade of puce. What in the name of the great cosmic jelly is going on? He gurgled, his words barely audible over the excited chatter. A particularly bold flip-flop student, Gleep, raised three of his seven appendages. Professor. Professor. There's a new transfer student. Zilthrop's single, massive eye swiveled towards the classroom entrance and promptly widened to comical proportions. There, ducking under the doorframe that was at least two feet too short for him, stood a human. The class fell into a stunned silence, broken only by the occasional nervous bloop from the more easily startled species. The human, a towering mass of muscle and bone, squeezed through the opening, a sheepish grin plastered across his face. Ah, uh, hi there, he said, his voice a deep rumble that sent vibrations through the floor. I'm Jake. Jake Thompson. I'm the new exchange student from Earth. Half the class instinctively retreated to the far corner of the room, while the other half leaned in, fascinated by this walking, talking manifestation of death itself. Professor Zilthrop, his gelatinous form quivering slightly, managed to regain his composure. Ah, yes. The death world, he pronounced the word as if it might summon an eldritch horror. We were informed of your arrival. Jake's grin widened, revealing a row of alarmingly sharp teeth that glinted in the soft bioluminescent light of the classroom. Great. I'm really excited to be here. Earth's been part of the Galactic Federation for a while now, but this is my first time off-planet. A collective gasp rippled through the classroom. Gleep, ever the curious one, couldn't contain himself. You mean you've spent your entire life on a death world? He squeaked, his voice a mixture of awe and terror. Jake chuckled, a sound that resembled distant thunder to the alien ears. Well, yeah. Earth's home, you know. It's not so bad once you get used to the constant threat of death by, well, everything. Professor Zilthrop's eye twitched. Yes, well, fascinating as your homeworld's myriad ways of killing you may be, we do have a class to continue. Please take a seat, Mr. Thompson. Jake looked around the classroom, his eyes falling on the tiny, fragile-looking desks that seemed more suited for dolls than students. He scratched his head, a gesture that caused several students to flinch. Uh, I don't think that's going to work, Prof. Mind if I just stand? The professor sighed, a sound like a deflating balloon. Very well. Now, as I was saying before, we were so rudely interrupted. Sorry about that, Jake interjected, his voice booming through the classroom, despite his attempt at a whisper. The windows rattled ominously. Professor Zilthrop's eye narrowed. Mr. Thompson, I would appreciate it if you could refrain from speaking unless called upon. Now, the Zorblaxian digestive system. Oh, right. Sorry, Jake whispered again, this time managing to crack one of the windows. The class erupted into chaos. Some students were frantically trying to cover their auditory organs, while others were excitedly recording the event on their data pads. Silence, Professor Zilthrop roared, or at least attempted to. His version of a roar sounded more like a wet squelch to Jake's ears. The class quieted down, more out of shock at their usually mild-mannered teacher's outburst than any real sense of discipline. Jake, feeling increasingly awkward, decided to try and salvage the situation. He raised his hand, accidentally brushing against the ceiling and dislodging a few bioluminescent panels in the process. Professor Zilthrop's eye twitched again. Yes, Mr. Thompson, he asked, resignation heavy in his voice. I actually know a bit about Zorblaxian digestive systems, Jake said, trying his best to modulate his voice. Despite his efforts, the remaining intact windows vibrated dangerously. We covered it in my xenobiology class back on Earth. It's fascinating stuff. The professor's curiosity momentarily overcame his irritation. Oh. And what, pray tell, do you know about it? Jake's face lit up with enthusiasm. Well, the three stomach system is actually an evolutionary adaptation to their home planet's highly caustic atmosphere. The first stomach neutralizes the corrosive compounds, the second breaks down the complex proteins unique to their world, and the third. As Jake continued his impromptu lecture, his excitement grew, and with it, the volume of his voice. The students watched in horrified fascination as cracks spider webbed across the remaining windows, and that's why they can digest rocks. Jake finished triumphantly, his voice reaching a crescendo that finally proved too much for the beleaguered windows. With a sound like a thousand wind chimes being thrown into a wood chipper, every window in the classroom shattered simultaneously. In the ringing silence that followed, Jake looked around at the devastation, then at the stunned faces of his classmates and teacher. Oops, he said, his whisper somehow managing to dislodge a ceiling panel that crashed to the floor with a dull thud. Professor Zilthrop, who had instinctively formed himself into a protective ball, slowly unfurled. His single eye swept over the destruction before fixing on Jake with a look that could only be described as utter defeat. Class dismissed, he gurgled weakly, 
As the students filed out, chattering excitedly about the day's unexpected events, Jake approached the professor's desk, carefully picking his way through the glass-strewn floor. I'm really sorry about this, Professor, he said, his voice a barely audible rumble that still managed to make the remaining light fixtures sway. I'll help clean up, of course. Professor Zilthrop waved a gelatinous pseudopod dismissively. No, no, Mr. Thompson. I think you've helped quite enough for one day, Jake nodded, looking crestfallen. As he turned to leave, he paused at the door. You know, Professor, back on Earth we have a saying when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. The professor's eyes swiveled towards him confusion evident. I'm afraid I don't understand the relevance, Mr. Thompson. What are these lemons and how does one make aid from them? Jake grinned. It means we should try to find the positive in a bad situation, and I think I've got an idea that might help. The next day, Jake returned to the classroom, carrying a large, mysterious container. The windows had been hastily replaced with a form of energy shielding, giving the room an oddly shimmery appearance. His classmates eyed him warily as he made his way to the front of the room, where Professor Zilthrop was waiting with a mixture of curiosity and trepidation. Mr. Thompson, the professor began, his voice dripping with sarcasm. How kind of you to grace us with your presence. I do hope you're not planning any more. Vocal performances today. Jake's grin widened. Actually, Professor, I think I found a solution to our little problem. He patted the container proudly. The professor's eye narrowed suspiciously. And what, pray tell, is this solution? With a flourish, Jake opened the container, revealing a collection of odd-looking devices. These, he announced, are noise-cancelling headphones. I worked with the engineering department all night to modify them for various alien physiologies. A murmur of interest rippled through the class. You see, Jake continued, his enthusiasm building along with the volume of his voice. These headphones are designed to he caught himself as the energy shields began to flicker ominously. Sorry, he whispered, causing only minor distortions in the shields this time. He cleared his throat and tried again this time at a more moderate volume. These headphones are designed to cancel out specific frequencies, namely, the ones in my voice that seem to be causing all the trouble. Professor Zilthrop's eye widened with interest. Fascinating. And you say you created these overnight? Jake nodded, looking slightly embarrassed. Well, the basic technology already existed. I just helped adapt it for, you know, non-human use. The professor's gelatinous form rippled with what Jake hoped was approval. Very impressive, Mr. Thompson. Perhaps you're not a complete disaster after all. As Jake began distributing the headphones to his classmates, explaining how to use them to each species, the atmosphere in the classroom noticeably relaxed. Students who had been cowering in fear the day before were now curiously examining their new devices, chattering excitedly amongst themselves. Gleep, the bold flip-flop, was the first to try his on. As Jake spoke, the young alien's eyes widened in wonder. It works, he exclaimed. I can hear you, but the windows aren't shaking. Soon the entire class was fitted with their custom headphones, and for the first time since Jake's arrival, Professor Zilthrop was able to continue his lecture without interruption. As the class progressed, Jake found himself bombarded with questions during breaks. His classmates, no longer terrified of his earth-shattering voice, were fascinated by the death worlder in their midst. Is it true that humans drink poison for fun? Asked a spindly arachnoid, her eight eyes blinking in unison. Jake laughed, causing only a minor crackle in the headphones. Well, if you're talking about alcohol, then yeah, I guess we do. But it's not really poison to us. Well, not unless you drink too much. And you voluntarily expose yourselves to radiation, for cosmetic purposes, inquired a luminous, floating orb that Jake had learned was a photosynthian. Oh, you mean tanning? Yeah, some humans do that. It's not the healthiest habit, though. The questions continued, ranging from the mundane how do you survive with only two legs to the bizarre is, it true that humans can regrow limbs if they concentrate hard enough? Jake answered each query with patience and humor, his booming laugh no longer a threat thanks to the headphones. As the day wore on, he found himself enjoying the company of his alien classmates more and more. Even Professor Zilthrop seemed to be warming up to him. During a discussion on interspecies communication, the galatationist teacher actually called on Jake for his input. Mr. Thompson, he said, his voice carrying a hint of genuine interest, given your unique perspective, what are your thoughts on the challenges of communicating across species barriers? Jake considered the question carefully before responding. Well, Professor, I think today has been a pretty good example. Sometimes, the very things that make us different like the volume of my voice can be our biggest obstacles. But they can also be opportunities. He gestured to the headphones his classmates were wearing. We can't always change who we are, but we can find ways to meet in the middle. It's about adapting, understanding each other's needs, and being willing to put in the effort to make it work. The professor's eye crinkled in what Jake hoped was a smile. Well said, Mr. Thompson. It seems you may have a future in diplomacy, assuming you don't accidentally declare war by sneezing on some dignitary's sacred slime trail. The class erupted in laughter, and for once, Jake's booming guffaw didn't threaten to bring down the ceiling. 
As the day came to a close, Jake found himself surrounded by his new friends. Gleep, who had appointed himself as Jake's unofficial guide to alien social customs, was excitedly discussing plans for a cultural exchange party. You simply must teach us some Earth games, the flip-flop insisted, his appendages waving enthusiastically. Sure thing, Jake agreed. How about we start with something simple, like charades? The alien students looked at him blankly. You know, where you act something out without speaking, and everyone else tries to guess what it is. A collective oho of understanding rippled through the group, followed by excited chatter as they tried to imagine how such a game would work with their varied physiologies. As Jake watched his classmates discuss the logistics of a photosynthian trying to mine photosynthesis, he felt a tap on his shoulder. He turned to find Professor Zilthrop hovering beside him. Mr. Thompson, the professor, began, his voice uncharacteristically hesitant, I feel I owe you an apology. I may have been overly harsh in my initial assessment of you. Jake smiled. No hard feelings, Professor. I know I didn't make the best first impression. The gelatinous alien rippled in what Jake had come to recognize as embarrassment. Yes, well, be that as it may, your actions today have shown a level of initiative and problem-solving that is commendable. Your suggestion about finding the lemonade in the situation was quite apt. Thanks, Professor Jake said, touched by the alien's words. That means a lot coming from you. Zilthrop's eye crinkled again in his approximation of a smile. Yes, well, don't let it go to your head. I still expect you to complete the standard curriculum, Deathworlder adaptations notwithstanding. Jake grinned and gave a mock salute. Wouldn't dream of slacking off, sir. As the professor drifted away, Jake turned back to his classmates, who were now engaged in a heated debate about whether a species without limbs could effectively participate in charades. All right, all right, he said, his voice carrying easily over the din thanks to the headphones. How about we take this discussion somewhere more suitable for a demonstration? I hear the cafeteria has reinforced walls. The suggestion was met with enthusiastic agreement, and soon Jake found himself leading a parade of alien students through the halls of the academy. As they walked or floated, or oozed, depending on the species, Jake couldn't help but reflect on how much had changed in just two days. He'd arrived as an outsider, a curiosity at best and a terror at worst. Now he was just another student, albeit one who needed special equipment to avoid causing property damage with his voice. As they entered the cafeteria, drawing curious looks from the other occupants, Jake cleared his throat. Okay, everyone, who wants to go first at charades? A chorus of volunteers rang out, each alien eager to try this strange new earth game. Jake laughed, the sound reverberating through the room but causing no damage thanks to the reinforced walls. All right, all right, how about we start with... Gleep. The enthusiastic flip-flop bounced forward, his appendages waving excitedly. Okay, Gleep, Jake said, grinning. Remember, no talking. Just act it out. As Gleep began to contort his gelatinous body into increasingly bizarre shapes, the cafeteria filled with the sounds of laughter, wild guesses, and the occasional confused warble. Jake watched the scene with a sense of pride and belonging. He might be a death worlder, his very voice a potential threat to those around him, but here, in this moment, he was just Jake the new kid with the funny accent and the cool earth games. As the game progressed and more students joined in, the cafeteria became a hub of interspecies bonding. Species that had never interacted beyond polite nods in the hallway were now laughing together, united in their attempts to guess what in the galaxy a photosynthian twirling rapidly while pulsing with bioluminescence could possibly be trying to convey. It was, as it turned out, their interpretation of a black hole. The debate over whether this was an accurate portrayal lasted well into the night. In the midst of the chaos, Jake caught Professor Zilthrop watching from the doorway, his single eye crinkled in unmistakable amusement. As the night wore on, the cafeteria became a melting pot of intergalactic culture. Jake found himself at the center of it all, fielding questions about Earth and human customs, while simultaneously trying to understand the myriad of alien traditions surrounding him. So Jake chirped Silith, a bioluminescent lumina, her tendrils glowing with curiosity. On Earth, do you really have entire buildings dedicated to the consumption of frozen dairy products? Jake chuckled, careful to modulate his voice. You mean ice cream parlors? Yeah, we do. It's a pretty popular treat back home. The aliens exchanged looks of bewilderment and fascination. Gleep, ever the enthusiast, bounced excitedly. Oh, can we try this ice cream sometime? Is it safe for non-death worlders? Jake scratched his head, considering, you know, I'm not sure. We'd have to check with the exonobiology department. But hey, if we can't find a way to make it safe for everyone, maybe we could come up with some kind of equivalent for each species. This suggestion was met with a chorus of excited agreements and a flurry of ideas. Before long, plans were being made for an intergalactic ice cream social with each species, proposing their own version of a frozen treat. As the excitement bubbled around him, Jake felt a tap on his shoulder. He turned to find Professor Zilthrop hovering nearby, his gelatinous form rippling with what Jake had come to recognize as amusement. 
Mr. Thompson, the professor began, his voice carrying a note of grudging respect. I must admit, when you first arrived, I had my doubts. Doubts, I might add, that seemed well-founded when you nearly demolished my classroom. Jake winced. Yeah, sorry about that, professor. I really didn't mean to. Zilthrop waved a pseudopod dismissively. Yes, yes, water under the bridge, as you humans say. Or perhaps in this case glass underfoot. His eye crinkled in what Jake now knew was the Zorbellian equivalent of a smile. What I'm trying to say, Mr. Thompson, is that you've surprised me. And in my many cycles of teaching, that's not an easy feat to accomplish. Jake felt a warmth spread through his chest that had nothing to do with his death world of physiology. Thank you, Professor. That means a lot. Yes, well, Zilthrop continued, his tone becoming more serious, I believe you may have stumbled upon something rather significant here, Mr. Thompson. Something beyond mere noise-cancelling headphones and party games, Jake raised an eyebrow. What do you mean? The professor's eyes swiveled, taking in the scene of interspecies mingling and laughter. Look around you, Mr. Thompson. In all my years at this academy, I've never seen anything quite like this. Students from all corners of the galaxy, from environments as diverse as caustic gas giants to crystalline ice worlds, all coming together in harmony. Jake followed the professor's gaze, really taking in the scene for the first time. Gleep was engaged in an animated conversation with a group of arachnoids, his gelatinous appendages gesticulating wildly as he described something. Nearby, a photosynthian was teaching a group of fascinated lumina how to modulate their bioluminescence in complex patterns. Even the normally aloof crystallians were joining in, their faceted bodies refracting the light in dazzling displays as they attempted to participate in a game of charades. I. I guess I didn't really think about it, Jake admitted. I was just trying to fit in, you know. Zilthrop's eye crinkled again, and therein lies the beauty of it, Mr. Thompson. You didn't set out to create this, this cultural exchange. It happened naturally, as a result of your efforts to adapt and your classmates' curiosity about you. Jake nodded slowly, beginning to understand. So you're saying, I'm saying, Zilthrop continued, that perhaps this is the true value of the exchange student program, not just for you to learn about us, or for us to learn about death worlders, but for all of us to learn how to bridge the gaps between our species, to find ways to communicate, to understand, to coexist. As if to punctuate the professor's words, a roar of laughter erupted from a nearby group. Jake turned to see a crystallian, its faceted body glittering, attempting to mime what appeared to be a black hole. The sight was so absurd, so joyful, that Jake couldn't help but join in the laughter. His booming laugh, normally a source of terror, now blended seamlessly with the cacophony of alien sounds. The noise-cancelling headphones did their job, but Jake realized that they weren't really necessary anymore. His classmates had grown accustomed to his voice, just as he had grown accustomed to their various forms of communication. As the night wore on, Jake found himself at the center of an impromptu cultural exchange seminar. He regaled his classmates with tales of Earth's diverse ecosystems, from the depths of the Mariana Trench to the peaks of the Himalayas. In return, he learned about worlds he could scarcely imagine planets where the very atmosphere was alive with consciousness. Gas giants where entire civilizations existed in the ever-shifting clouds, and worlds of pure energy where thought itself was the primary form of communication. It was well past midnight when Professor Zilthrop finally called an end to the festivities. As the students began to disperse, many lingered to thank Jake for the evening's entertainment and to express their excitement for future cultural exchanges. As Jake helped clean up the cafeteria, careful not to accidentally crush any of the more delicate furniture, he felt a sense of accomplishment unlike anything he'd experienced before. He'd come to this alien academy expecting to be an outsider, a curiosity at best and a menace at worst. Instead, he'd found a place where his differences were not just accepted, but celebrated. Mr. Thompson Professor Zilthrop called as Jake was about to leave. A moment, if you please. Jake approached the hovering professor wondering if he was about to be chastised for keeping everyone up so late. Instead, Zilthrop's eye was crinkled in what Jake now recognized as a broad smile. I've been in communication with the Academy board, Zilthrop began, his gelatinous form rippling with excitement. We've decided to expand the exchange student program. Your success here has shown us the potential for interspecies cooperation and understanding. Jake's eyes widened. That's great, Professor, but what does that have to do with me? Zilthrop's eye twinkled mischievously. Well, Mr. Thompson, we were hoping you might be willing to stay on as a sort of cultural ambassador to help other exchange students acclimate and to continue fostering this spirit of interspecies cooperation. Jake felt a grin spreading across his face. Professor, I'd be honored. As he left the cafeteria, Jake couldn't help but chuckle to himself. Who would have thought that his earth-shattering voice, once a source of terror, would end up being the catalyst for intergalactic understanding? It just went to show, he mused that sometimes the very things that set us apart can be the things that bring us together. And as for the windows, 
Well, they'd found a solution for that, but more importantly, they'd shattered something far more significant, the barriers between species that had seemed so insurmountable just days ago. Jake Thompson, the death worlder whose indoor voice could shatter windows, had found his place among the stars, and the galaxy, it seemed, would never be quite the same.